Hello everybody, it's Matt and welcome to Collaboration Coach. In this video, I'm gonna do something a bit different. Until now, we've been doing how-tos and tutorials on Office 365. And this time, we're gonna have a look at the Office 365 roadmap and what new features will be coming soon that you might be interested in. So every month, I'll look at what's new and what's coming and I'll talk about them and I'll demonstrate what I can. I'll figure out what you're most interested in based on the videos you watch on the channel and the comments you make. So we're gonna call this monthly show Radar and plan to have it out the first week of the month. And it's a bit of an experiment, so let us know what you think and if it's useful or not. So here we go, this is the Office 365 Radar for February 2020. In November last year, Microsoft had its Ignite event and announced a ton of new features, some of which are showing up this month. So I'll focus on Teams, SharePoint and OneDrive here. So first in Teams, we have the new Files tab. This is the new look for the Files tab. I can go to any channel, so here I'm on General, and I've gone to the Files tab. And you can see here the look of the Files page is different. We've got some additions that weren't available previously and to do these things we'd have to go into SharePoint so open up a browser and, and go off to SharePoint. So for example there's the sync button. So now we can sync our SharePoint libraries to OneDrive sync client through Teams. Previously we had to go into a browser. Another thing we've got up here is this view menu. So all documents is the default. I can drop it down and I can choose tile view for example. That's something else we couldn't do until now. We can also edit the view so we can change it and add new columns. So for example, in this general library, I've added a retention label column so I can see the retentions labels straight out of Teams. Another thing that's been added is the ability to check out through Teams. So now I can right click a file, go to the more menu and choose check out, which then checks the file out and marks it with the little red icon with an arrow in it. If I want to check it back in, I just go more and check in, or I can discard the checkout as well. Next up is pinning channels in Teams. When you're a member of lots of Teams, it's sometimes hard to find the channel you're looking for. Channel pinning is a way to put the channels that you use most at the top of your list of Teams so they're easy to get to. Just find the channel that you want to pin, right click it, choose pin, and it will appear at the top of the list. Now when you create new channels, you can make them private so that only some members of the team can see the files and the posts inside. These are called private channels. Now when you add a new channel, you can choose whether the channel is private or standard. When you choose private, you can then choose which members of the team should be able to see the new channel. You will also see a little padlock icon to illustrate the fact that it's private. Lastly in Teams, there's the ability to run a quick poll in a post. So you can do this from an existing post. So if you come to the ellipsis on a post and choose more actions and create new poll, or you can start from a new post by hitting this Forms button here. And basically it's using Microsoft Forms to create a new poll. You can have up to six options. And you pose a question and then you give a bunch of options to your team to choose from. You can have multiple answers. And when you're done, you send it to the post and then it's available for everyone to vote on. All they need to do is choose their option, hit submit vote, and the results are displayed just below the poll in the results window. So let's move on to SharePoint. This first feature is called the expanded view, and it's just a quick hack if you wanna get things out of your way so you've got a nice tidy desktop while working in SharePoint. So from any document library, you can come to the icon on the right hand side here called expand content. And when you click it, it just pushes all the navigation out of the way so you've got a nice tidy view to work in. 
The next couple of SharePoint features are all about formatting your columns and rows in your SharePoint libraries and lists. If I come up to the view menu on this document library and choose format current view, you'll see I've got this option now called alternating row styles. When I select this, it's going to highlight different rows in my document library so they're easier to read. So I can save this and the formatting will be kept on the document library. I can also edit the row styles so I can choose different colors for each row. This next feature helps me format my columns. If I come to this modify column, which is a date column here, go to column settings and format this column. I've now got this option to format the dates. If I just switch it on, you can see that it formats the dates with a color. So it throws a color on the dates depending on what date it is. If I edit the template here, I can choose what colors to use from this palette here. And I've also got the option to, to color the dates in different ways. So this one is before, this one is the current date, and this one is after. So I can go through, indicate the things that are important to me. And when I'm done, I just hit save, and that will keep that formatting in the document library. So this next feature is a way of connecting web parts together within a page. To demonstrate this, I've got a page open here that I'm editing, and I've split it into two sections. So I've got left and a right. On the left hand side, I'm going to drop in a document library web part. And I'm going to choose this presentations library to show in that web part. So now you can see I've got a list of presentations. I'm just going to edit that and take off the command bar. So that doesn't show the command bar at the top. And then apply that. So that's ready to go. Now over here on the right hand side, I'm going to add a new web part and I'm going to add the file viewer web part, this one here. So it's going to ask me what file I want to view, and I'm just going to cancel that, because what I'm going to do is connect this file viewer web part so that it shows me the presentations on the left-hand side when I click on them. So to do that, I just select the properties pane, and instead of adding a file, I go up to this ellipsis here in the top right-hand corner and connect to source. Then this source drop-down comes up and I choose presentations. And now these two web parts are connected. So I just need to close and publish this page. So now when I select these PowerPoint presentations just by clicking on them, they'll be viewed on the right hand side. Let's move on to OneDrive. And this feature is called Request Files. And it allows you to create a folder in your own OneDrive and send out a request to people to upload files to it and they don't have any other access to it so they can't see what's inside. So it works like this. You create a folder and select it. So I've got one here called Funny Photos. And then you hit this Request Files button, which brings up the Request Files dialog. Then you just need to type in the name of the types of files that you're requesting. In my case, it's Funny Photos. Then I hit Next and it takes me to this page where I can copy the link to that particular folder. So this is the link I'm gonna to send to the people that I want to upload the funny photos. So I can either share that link in a chat or elsewhere in an email, or I can actually email people directly from here and add a message. So I could type in the names of people inside my organization or outside, it doesn't matter. When I'm done, I hit the done button. The file is requested. So now that link can be used to upload the photos. So now I've switched context and I'm logged in as someone else and I've used the link that I've shared to open up this page, which is the request for the photos. So as the person who's gonna upload the photos, all I need to do is hit the select files button, choose the file and open it. And then I can put my name on there too. And that's important because it will actually prefix the name of the file with the name of the person. So I'll be able to identify who uploaded it. So once I'm happy with all this, I could just hit the upload button. And you can upload one or more files if you want to. But if it's just one, then that's your job done. So switching back to the requester of the files now, you can see in my funny photos folder, I've got one item. When I click and open it, you can see it's that image that Megan uploaded for me. Also, the requester of the files will eventually receive an email 
that notifies them that files have been uploaded. So you can see here, a new file was uploaded to my funny photos folder. You can see the name and then I can go see the new files if I want to. Okay, so this last one was something that Microsoft announced in a post and got some traction from some websites like The Verge. And they announced the fact that they would have a walkie talkie feature within Teams. It basically meant that you'd have a walkie talkie in your phone using the Teams app. And also that Microsoft had been working with Samsung to develop a phone that had a button that you could press to use the walkie talkie. So you fire up the Teams app and you'd press the button every time you wanted to talk. The Samsung phone is the Galaxy X Cover Pro and Microsoft are testing that through the first half of this year. It will be in private preview for the first six months and then possibly a public preview after that, but Microsoft haven't released any dates yet. So that's it. That's the first edition of Radar. If you have any comments or suggestions on what we can put in the next one, then please let us know. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.